So when I did my quarterback rankings list, what was this, a month ago? Ish, two months ago, maybe it might. It was right around the time training camp started. If it was right before, right when it started, and I said I had Josh Allen. I don't even know if I have the graphic anymore. I don't think I do, but I had Josh Allen as the fourth best quarterback in the NFL, behind obviously Mahomes, obviously Burrow. I got a lot of pushback for putting uh, Trevor Lawrence above Josh Allen. I don't think I'm getting that same pushback today, if you know what I mean. I'll talk about the uh, my Bryson's best ten later in the show. Spoiler alert: the Jags are in it, but I had Josh Allen at four because I'm like, okay. The turnovers, the inconsistent play are massive problems for the Jets and something that is going to have to be corrected at some point or another If or, or they're, you know, they're out of contention potentially. By the way, I don't love the roster as is, but that's another conversation for another day. But I said his upside, and when he's at his peak, as we saw in that divisional playoff game against Mahomes, by the way, the week before that, when he literally led the Bills offense to a perfect game, they scored every time they touched the football. There might have been a kneel down at the end, but out the, the drives that mattered, they scored every single time against a Bill Belichick-led defense. So it felt like Allen was sort of morphing into this, okay, is he going to be the guy to go up against Mahomes for years to come? Now it kind of feels like Burrow's the guy. Lawrence is going to put himself in the discussion, I think, in short order this season to be the MVP of the league. But it felt like Josh was still kind of in that, in that category. It's time we sort of come to the realization that this is year six for Josh, and he's sort of acknowledged to a certain extent what I'm about to say. He's kind of it's kind of who he is, the turnover problem at least. Before we get into the turnovers on Monday, um, I love by the way how the, the everybody made a big deal about Dak Prescott's interceptions. By the way, off one year, most of them fluke picks, and Josh Allen's been throwing picks his whole NFL career. By the way, let, let's check this real quick. And I'll read it off of the podcast audience. Josh Allen has more. Josh Allen has more turnovers than anybody in the National Football League since coming into the NFL. Ninety turnovers since 2018. He actually has more turnovers than games started. I think he started 85 games in his career. He's had 90 turnovers. That's kind of an issue. And you see right there, 20 interceptions. 20 since 2022. That is more than anybody in the National Football League. So that is that has been a legitimate concern for Josh. By the way, those are including playoff picks uh, as well. That This has been a problem for Josh Allen since the day he stepped in the NFL. And I talked about on Monday's show, so I'm at the Dolphins-Chargers game, and about how we do not give enough love and enough credit to how important, and I've said this all offseason, but how important coaching is in that you're seeing Mike McDaniel get the absolute very best out of Tua, and you look at Los Angeles with this amazing talent, Justin Herbert, and they, they they still can't get the most out of him because the coaching isn't right. You're seeing that in, in, in Buffalo with Josh Allen. Yeah, Brian Dable, who turned Daniel Jones into a guy like, hey, is Daniel Jones worth $40 million? And the Giants evidently said yes. I think they regret that decision today. Probably regretted it the second that contract was signed, but they made that decision. We would have never have thought about Daniel Jones in that same breath a year ago. But that's what Brian Dable did. He cut, he helped Josh Allen cut back on the turnovers, cut back on the reckless plays. And again, it's not just turnovers. I'll get into the turnovers from Monday in just a second. It's the reckless, what are you doing plays that other quarterbacks simply don't do. There's a play in, I think it was in the late second half, or, or sorry, late first half or early second half, they're in, in and around the red zone. It's third and long. Josh Allen, he doesn't see anything open. Fine, he takes off running with his, running, uh, you know, takes off running to the left, outside the pocket. Listen, Josh is great with his legs. I think he uses his legs too much. I think the Bills use his leg, legs too much. It's, it puts him in position to get injured. But Josh Allen also puts himself to get in position to get injured because he takes off running. He's not going to get the first down. There are two or three Jets surrounding him, and he's going to be five, six yards short of the first down. He tries to dive over him. It's like, dude, you, you, you're putting yourself in position to get hurt. You're putting the Bills in a terrible position because if, God forbid, you go down, now they're really done. Listen, I'd have, I did not have the Bills making the playoffs this season, but if they make it, I won't be just floored. I'm like, I can't believe the Buffalo Bills made the playoffs. Josh Allen's an excellent quarterback. He's a great quarterback at his ceiling. The problem is, how long has it been since we've been like, oh yeah, yeah, Josh is that dude. Opening night last year against a terrible Rams defense. That's, I mean, that's the last time I think I can think of. God, look at Josh Allen. He looks man, that that. This is a guy that can go toe to toe with Patrick Mahomes. 
his numbers have literally gotten worse every year since he almost won MVP in 2020. You look at his 2021 stats, which are good, not great. His, you look at his numbers last year, he's already off to a bad start this year. If you look at the Bills, uh, in the, remember when Josh Allen threw that pretty, it was kind of a Holmes-esque, uh, dare I say, that, that pretty little float pass when he was barely behind the line of scrimmage. Remember this play to, to step on Diggs? And it, it put Buffalo, I, what, what did it make the score? 13, it was it 13 to 3 at this point uh, for the Buffalo Bills, if I could check. Apologies, let me check my notes here. Uh, the Josh Allen touchdown pass to to Stephon Diggs. It, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, it made the, it's made the score 10 to 3, and Buffalo on the play where Josh got pummeled. Uh, again, he's seven yards, he's six yards short of the first down, and he's trying to dive over guys. Again, reckless plays, and Buffalo gets a field goal, so it's 13 to 3. From that point on, here's how the Bills' drives ended. Interception, punt, interception, fumble, field goal at the end of the first half, uh, end of the second half, and then three and out. The only reason, not to take credit away from the Jets, because man, did they fight hard. Props to them. The only reason, I should say, I shouldn't say the only reason, the biggest reason. The New York Jets won that football game because the best New York Jets quarterback on that field on Monday Night Football was Josh Allen. The only way you screw that up is if you just play reckless football, throwing the ball in places where it doesn't need. I mean, there's a play in it. He tries a deep ball, second half to Stephon Diggs. He's got two guys all over him, one of them being DJ Reed. And Stephon Diggs, if you watch the play, Stephon Diggs sees the ball in the air, and you know, in his head, he's thinking, oh, you know what? It's just about to be another pick. And so Stephon is trying to be like his brother Trayvon and diving to swat the ball away, playing defense. Looks like Josh Allen's throwing to DJ Reed. Ball falls right into DJ Reed's hands. It's a pick in the end zone, and the Bills give away points. Like, the, these are the plays. These are the games, if you're Buffalo, where your defense is not as good as it was last year. It's not. Your weapons, aside from Stephon Diggs, are suspect at best. Your offensive line isn't great. Your running game isn't great. A Josh Allen defender would say, well, then he doesn't have much to work with. A Josh Allen either skeptic or where I would put myself as a realist would say, the only way you screw this up against a Zach Wilson quarterback team is if you continue to give them the ball in, in, in great position. Or if you hand them points or take away points from your own team. That's the only way you lose that football game. That's exactly what Josh Allen did. It's it's sometimes it's just in your DNA as a quarterback to play reckless. I've seen it from Sam Darnold. I've seen it from Carson Wentz. I think Josh Allen is infinitely more talented than both. His arm probably the best in the league. He's an incredible athlete. He's very mobile. His accuracy has actually improved a lot. I've talked about a lot in carving it up. It's improved tremendously since he entered the NFL. But it's these, it's 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 these plays, it's it's these little, I should say little mistakes, it's these big mistakes that he just he can't help himself. And what what did Josh Allen say? Uh same, you know what, different day. I think jo listen, I don't think Josh Allen there, sometimes folks, you have it's it's so whether it's a belief system, whether it's a way you approach things that's just so ingrained in you, you can't help it. I think Josh Allen is fully aware of his turnover problem. He just can't help himself. It's how he's always played football. And certainly since Brian Dable left, he's gotten back into his bad habits. Josh Allen has regressed. He's not the same quarterback today he was three years ago or even two years ago. So we need to stop talking about it. And I think Josh Allen's still excellent. I really do. I'm not going to say one game decides. What do we say? Don't overreact to week one. But I don't want to overreact to this game. Because I still think he's excellent. I still think if he plays at his peak, the Bills are potential Super Bowl contenders with a better roster. It's why I don't think they'll make the playoffs because I don't love the roster and I don't love where Josh Allen is progressing or better said, regressing too. But we've got to stop talking about him in this conversation of a Mahomes, a Burrow, a Lawrence, heck, a Jalen Hurts. Today, I'd take... Mahomes, Burrow, Lawrence, hands down, don't even think twice about it. Um, I would take Hertz, Lamar, and yes, a guy who I viewed as a poor man's Josh Allen, maybe poor man's Josh Allen, a, um, a discount Josh Allen, Dak Prescott. Everybody freaked out about the Dak interceptions. 
I would say of the 15 picks he threw last year, obviously half of them were just either mistakes by the receivers, be it through drops, or um, or, 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 or like CeeDee Lamb had, had made two mistakes. CeeDee Lamb and Dalton Schultz made two horrible mistakes in terms of the misread of Dak uh, and the misread on the route against Green Bay last year in, in November. And then the other half were on Dak. How many of those plays for Dak, I can think of probably one off the top of my head, maybe two, that were just, what the heck are you, where are you looking? Like, what were you trying to accomplish through this play? What what did you see in the defense that made you want to do that? Josh Allen, he does it, what, three times a game at least? It's in his DNA. It's who he is. And it's time we start to, to view him through that kind of lens. That's not to say he can't get better. But there's certain things that are just ingrained in you that you, you can't get out. I'm wired a certain way. You're wired a certain way. That's how Josh Allen is wired at the quarterback position. Not just with interceptions, but with reckless plays like running on third down, you're going to be five yards short of the marker, and you're trying to dive over the over guys. It's it's some some guys just can't help it, and it's 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 rough. It's rough to watch. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live, as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.